So Israel's prime minister this week visited the kosher supermarket in Paris where four Jewish customers were shot in cold blood in those French terror attacks and afterwards shared a warning for the world. He said, quote, the terror strikes that we have experienced here will grow to dimensions people do not yet understand. Earlier tonight, I had a chance to speak with Israel's ambassador to the United States, Ron Dermer. You say that this is indeed uh, a much broader struggle, correct? Absolutely. And I think the most important thing in fighting against militant Islam, and remember, it's not militants, it's not Islam, it's militant Islam. The most important thing in fighting it is to understand that all these groups that people think may have this or that local grievance, they're all connected. They're all fired by the mm -hmm. same fanaticism. It doesn't matter if it's Boko Haram in Nigeria but or if it's ISIS. But our State Department denies that. Well, I don't know if they deny it. Maybe they choose to express themselves in a different way. I can only tell you how my prime minister sees the issue. Mm -hmm. We see all these groups as being connected. Uh, that doesn't mean that they're sitting in the same war room planning attacks. Sometimes, right. actually, they fight each other. So Boko Haram in Nigeria, uh, Hamas in Gaza, ISIS in Iraq and Syria, Hezbollah in Lebanon, Iran and all of its terror proxies throughout the region, they sometimes fight each other, but they definitely hate Jews, hate Christians, hate Israel, hate America. And in their vision of the world, there's no place for any of us. And actually, there's no place for a lot of Muslims who disagree with it. The Muslims are the greatest victims of militant Islam. You know, when you look at uh, what Israel has known, the violence that Israel has known for so many years and that so many of us, you know, sort of grew up uh, a whole generation watching that and, and feeling for the people of Israel. Uh, do you believe that the rest of the rest of us are about to live in a world where we have to either get used to or get real about experiencing similar attacks like that all the time? Yes, absolutely, because, you know, it's one thing to have all of these radical preachers uh, in suburbs of London and Paris and Brussels. It's quite another thing, Martha, to have trained killers coming back from a war theater and setting up terror cells. And there are so many soft targets in Europe and, of course, in the United States. And every democratic society has to find the right balance between protecting civil liberties, which is the heart of democracy, uh, but also securing its citizens. And we in Israel have had to find that balance. I think we've done a very good job of doing that for the last uh, 66 years of our state, living with threats faced by no other country on earth, but yeah. remaining a liberal, democratic, and open society. I think a lot of people look at what's going on and think, you know, we are going to be in a world, if we don't do something very dramatic very quickly, where we have these kinds of attacks, where we have to sort of steel ourselves against the experience of going to the supermarket or going to work like the people of Charlie Hebdo and like we saw here certainly on 9-11 as well. How, you know, I guess what advice do you have, you know, for, for, for well, making it as safe and livable as possible if this is the direction we're going? And I hope it's not, but, but what if? Well, first of all, identify the danger and then you have to take action to meet it. You have to have effective policing. You have to have effective uh, intelligence. You have to pass laws that will effectively deal with the problem. And you also have to wage a moral battle. The single most important thing in fighting terrorism is moral clarity. You have to take a stand against terrorists. You know, the last couple of days, everyone has been talking about who wasn't at a rally in Paris. You know what concerned me? A couple of people who were at a rally in Paris. I saw President Abbas standing at a rally in Paris. So he's in a rally in Paris against terrorism, and yet he's in a government with Hamas, a designated terror organization. I saw the prime minister of Turkey at that rally, and yet Hamas, an organization that's a terror organization that, whose charter calls for the murder of Jews worldwide, they have their military headquarters in Turkey. No one speaks out against this. Yeah, now, but if I, you know, I guess some people battle, would say— We it, have to stand together. Excuse me, Ambassador, but, but some people would say, well, they were there. They were there, and that says something. And we do have Muslim leaders in the Netherlands as well as in Egypt starting to stand up and point the finger back at these militant Islamists in their own, in their own ranks. But wouldn't it have helped, do you think, if President Obama had been at that march? Because then he could turn around to all of the leaders that you just mentioned and say, I was there, you were there, we marched together. What did we march for when we marched together? And really hold them to account. Look, the United States is leading the whole world in confronting al-Qaeda. They're leading the world in confronting ISIS. So I have no doubt whatsoever where the United States stands in this struggle. I also have no doubt where the president of Egypt stands, al-Sisi, who spoke out in, I think, a very courageous way Absolutely. in his own country against fundamentalism, something that has not been widely, that widely reported here in the United States. I do have big doubts about where President Abbas stands. 
I think that's great that he's against terror, but he has to be against terror even when Jews are the ones being killed. Get out of alliance that you've made with Hamas. And I have big doubts about Turkey. Turkey, on the one hand, having terrorists have military headquarters in their country, and on the other hand, for a Western audience and Western television saying they're standing uh, with, the United, uh, with the United States and with the rest of the world in confronting terrorism. We all, all the forces of civilization have to stand together. The United States, Canada, France, Germany, Israel, Australia, all of us and moderate countries in the Arab world have to stand together to win this All fight. Right. Ambassador Germer, thank you so much. Good to have thank you here you. tonight.